Okay, here we go. And we're streaming. This is all good news. Let me get my uh, setup over here on my monitor and then we'll switch over to um, my main screen here. Uh, whoop, there we go. Um, so what I thought I would do, since I'm working on roguelikes, um, uh, what I thought I would do would just be to start off, I open this tab over here. Um, the seven day roguelike challenge recently um, finished up and there's a whole slew of roguelikes now on itch.io um, that are brand new and, and ready to be played. And some of them I noticed you, know, you can just play in the browser. So I thought maybe we'd, we'd try one, um, play it for a few minutes and uh, just to warm up and then uh, get right back into the, um, get right back into the, what, where's my mouse? There it is, uh, my, the, the mushroom forest that we were working on yesterday. Um, so let's play around a little bit with that, and then to, to what what looks interesting to try. Bold Strike Through is the first one on the list, so maybe we try that one first and see what it's like. Oh, do we have to sign up before I I play, or can I play it without signing up? You just need to sign up to to rate it. There you go, run game. Bold strike through. If it has music, I should pause my music, right? Yeah, it has sounds. Okay, so what do we got? Um, what do we got? Oh, I guess we move with the mouse. Can I use the arrow keys to move? No. Last, last to move. H J K L to move. No. I guess I click. That's that looks like a chair. I'm not sure what this is. This looks like an elevator. I'm not sure how to play this game. Is there uh, any other keyboard? No, there's no keyboard controls. Let's see if it has a description. Click an open space to queue move there. Click an enemy to attack them. Click anywhere to cancel a cube move. Player character and enemies have health bar and direction indicator. Characters are controlled by the player have a cyan direction indicator. Enemies have magenta. Click the electronic attack button in the lower left, and then an enemy to take control of that enemy. Okay. All right, let's try again. Um, maybe I can restart the game here. All right. So I don't see any enemies. This must be the electronic takeover thing. So I can just move around. Oh, there's an enemy. So can I do that and then click on an enemy? Oh, I see. Now they're moving together. Why is that guy going that way? All right. So I'm over here now. Where's the enemy I control? Oh, I guess when I'm... So if I can... Can I... I guess I was out of range. Let's try shooting. Nope. Blocked. Ow. I can do this here to take him over. That way he won't be shooting at me. And now I can go up here. Maybe shoot at this guy. I'm not sure about the double move, how that's working. Oh, I see, I'm moving this guy now. Now I'm moving this guy. Oh, but now I can control him, right? Boom. Okay. I see how it works. Okay, so now I'm, I've got his, his choice. If he moves here and this guy, can he shoot? He can. And he was almost dead. All right, so, and then we take him over. Nice. Uh, and now I guess we leave the level. Interesting. Um, how far do we go? Or is it, is it just repeating the same 
kind of idea. Oh, I don't get to control him through the elevator. So once I go through the elevator, it no longer works. Okay. Oh, there's there's a guy. Um, let's go down and try to attack him. Um, he's hiding behind the thing, though. Controlling him still. Nope. Why isn't he moving? Oh. He's he's purple now. So how did he go purple? Did I lose control of him? I did. Huh. I'm not sure what the uh, the deal is with that. Oh, I see. There's a little number about over his head how about how long I can control him. I see. I missed that part. So he, I can control him for 20 moves. All right. So that's an interesting game. Um, I'm not sure what the win condition is, although it did say that there was one. If you look on the uh, instructions... It says the game's been patched to fix the crash on the windscreen. So maybe you just get through the whole thing and survive the whole way long. Um, then you win. I don't know how many levels there are. They don't seem to be getting harder and there doesn't seem to be any equipment in the, uh, the thing. So, okay. Interesting game. Let's close that one out, um, and then we'll try a different one tomorrow. So meanwhile, back in the roguelike that we're making, or we're tutorialing, um, let's take a look at, uh, we just finished this up. We finished the targeting for self-exploding mushrooms. What's missing, though, is I, I didn't want to go and change the spawn rate for the mushrooms, right? Which is what he did. To demonstrate the monster we just created, I upped the mushroom's spawn density to 300 and changed the explosion radius to six. One of the things that we added to the cheat menu was the ability to summon an item by name. We have this little editor thing here where we can summon a long sword. And and now if we look in our inventory, we have a longsword. We have to spell it exactly right, because if it doesn't it doesn't work, here it says trying to summon longsword. If I try to sum, summon something that doesn't exist, right? If I go like this, it says trying to summon it, but then if we look in the inventory, there isn't anything there. It just didn't, it didn't summon it, what didn't exist. What we could do is extend that to spawn creatures, right? So instead of summon an item, we can um, generate a creature. Now, G is already taken. We have to think of a letter. And then maybe we can use that same editor code to pull up different creatures to fight against. Um, let's take a look at what the, our editor code looks like and see if it's actually... Oh, I'm going to put the sound back on. What do I do? There we go. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just adjusting my headphone now. Okay. Let's um, let's take a look here. We had an editor, right? And the editor was mostly. Um, let's, let's, let's go actually take a look at where it's defined. So I just threw it here in lib and it should actually have its own thing. What we did was we created this key map so that we could throw any key that came to it as a key code and then it'll convert it to, 
um, either uppercase here if the shift key is being held down or lowercase if it if it isn't we also had to add in numbers um, I'm not sure what uppercase number is or an uppercase space is but that would go through that same code I don't think it would make a difference I don't think it breaks anything if we do that but we should be able to extend this to summon creatures. We just don't want to summon the creature into the per, uh, the player's backpack, which is currently what's happening. If I go into the game state and we look at uh, summon item, right? We have spawn named entity and spawn type is carried. So, and then again, if, if we're summoning a creature, we want to summon it in somewhere in the radius of the player in an open space near the player. So that, I think that would be a little more complicated code. We would have to, um, go, go in a radius around the player, collect all the open floor spaces and then pick one at random and summon the creature or maybe just summon it next to the player but then doing some sort of radius we could just do um the three by three square around the player and that would allow us to summon these mushrooms although they would attack right away so we wouldn't be able to get that same effect um, so the way they did it in the tutorial was Ross spawns. We changed the firecap mushroom weight uh, to 300. And then as a result, when we go to this level, they're going to be all over the place. So we might be able to see some chain reaction explosions. Um, let us get rid of this as well while we're here. Um, as soon as this is done building. Oh, it looks like I already pulled it out. Okay, refresh. Um, we'll go into God mode and then jump, 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 jump. Okay, so they should be, there should be a whole bunch of them now. There's one. I don't want to get too close to it. There's another one down here, but that's that's too far away from the first one. There's two. I don't know if they're within the same radius. They might be. If I get close enough. Two of them exploded. It would be nice to see a, a message in the in the thing. So I don't know if that was a ch ooh. There's another one. There's two together, but they're both going to explode because they saw me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we're actually seeing. Let's see, let's get close to this guy. Oops, let's get close to this guy without. Oh, I don't know that he. Yeah, so he th this guy's just out was just outside the radius. All right, that would be another thing to fix is that that the explosion particle effect leaves behind a tooltip. Oh, well, this fire cap mushroom is not a, trying to explode. So there's another bug somewhere where the fire cap mushroom um, is not able to explode. We we fixed one of the bugs yesterday. It may have tried to fire and somehow survived it shouldn't have right because we automatically destroy the thing uh, so there's a bug yet another bug um, and I don't know how to check that because that that would require all right just changing this back to 10 okay 
Um, confusion shrooms. Let's let's just move on. <laughs> confusion shrooms. Another obvious effect is mushrooms whose spores sow confusion. We have everything we need to implement them. Um, in the monsters section of the spawns, we just define a basic mushroom called a spore cat mushroom, and then we add it to the. All right. So let's do that fire cat. So we just put it right in here. Like that. And it has um, abilities and an on death. In spawn weights, we make the common in the fungal grove. So it's just this line here. Copied, paste. Oh, it's the same thing. And then we can define the confusion cloud spell. Like that. And this particle is a question mark particle. So we, we'd be able to see the difference. All right. So it looks like maybe the rest of this chapter is going to just be adding to the JSON file. So this might go relatively quickly. Uh, except for the building in between, which takes 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. Um, I should have looked at what color they were, but that's okay. We, we'll find out soon enough. Okay, they're blue. Spore cat mushroom. Now let's see if we get a question mark particle effect when we get close. We do not. Oh, there it is. It's, see, it's hitting the player for four or six HP. It shouldn't, right? Because the attack. We fixed this. Um, No, it wasn't the range bug. I thought I'd fix that separately. Uh, get show this. Yeah, I thought I, I, I fixed that separately. Maybe. No, it's, it's there. So it was um, in the event triggers, right? Where we checked the um, 100%. Actually, we can just look for that 100.0. Yeah, in our damage system, this this was flipped. This comparison was flipped. So we should be seeing, I mean, the effect chance for these guys is 1.0. If we look here, it's a 1.0 chance. 1.0 times 100 is 100. RNG roll dice from 1 to 100 should be less than or equal to Unless this comes up as 99 sometimes, um, which it, yeah, I don't think it should. I don't think it would. I, you know, it's always tricky with floating point numbers, but we should never see the spore cat mushroom or any mushroom that's, that just explodes immediately try to hit the player. Let's just take a look at this code again. Was it this one? Maybe it was this one. Well, that's proc effects, right? So it was the damage system. Nope, that's wrong one, damage system. Oh, this is on death, right? Okay, so it was here. Oh, I see. We are we are seeing a hits before the proc effect happens. So maybe the proc effect, hmm. Oh no, this is see this is the weapon. Ah, visible AI system. 100.0. There we are. All right. So if the reaction is attack, we look for abilities. If the ability is in range, B 
between min range and max range. Um, is the min range wrong? Let's take a look. Yeah, min range is zero. And our range is going to be one. And if it's less than the maximum range and we have a, a to hit chance of 100%, then we're going to do this. So we cast the spell, which is our either, either the confusion cloud spell or the, the other one, the explode spell. Done gets set to true, so we don't, oops, so we don't try to do this wants to approach so maybe <laughs> I can always put something here and just log it and say that no we tried to do something but we we didn't Hmm. Do we have the name somewhere? Let's take a look. We should have the names. The entity turn mind faction. There's names. So I can say names dot. Yeah. Oh, that's just that's used for the names of that. That's fine. What we can do is to say is uh, let name equals names dot get is that it entity dot name rltk console log and then we have to get uh, I guess entity name and then the spell name let s name names get spell or oh abilities let some abilities so we have each ability does the ability have a name let's find out unwrap or maybe it's the other way around unwrap name get um ability unwrap name all i'm trying to do is log this out format um Ename decided not to cast S name. And that's all I'm doing. Is that going to check? Or is that going to fail? Expected struck entity found a special ability. Oh, okay. So the ability doesn't have. Or maybe the, maybe I can just grab the spell name this way, right? Because I have ability dot spell. Maybe that's it. And hopefully that's a string. Oh, it doesn't like this. Move occurs. I don't want to move it. Can I just ampersand it and not move it? Uh, again, another move. Okay. Okay, so let's see if this... Let's spend the 30 seconds to see if we can figure out why... Where is it? Here it is. Why these mushrooms are not... Um, there was another question mark there. That's interesting. Oh, because the um, the leprechaun was confused. That's funny. Um, that's why the question mark was showing up. Although it was showing up in the wrong spot. That's weird. Okay, so let's refresh. Begin a new game. Go into God mode. One, two, three, four, five, six. Reveal. Okay, so now I'm going to see down here in the log what what we're casting or what the mushrooms are trying to cast as we approach them. We 
if we can find any. There's one. Oh, there's two. Okay. So Firecap Mushroom decided not to cast Explode. Right there. If I hit space, then it explodes. So what I need to do now is try to figure out WTF. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save all of these things. Um, RN let chance is equal to this. Right, and then we can just say, oh. Yeah, we'll just do chance like this, and then we're going to say if chance less than that, and then we're going we're gonna to put it in our log here. Um, we'll say range is this range, and then chance is equal to chance. Right? And that way we get most of the information, although the min range and max range are not. Hmm. Yeah, well, we'll be able to see. We know the min range is zero and the max range is uh, three. So we'll be able to see if that shows up. So let's build again and then try one more time. Take a look at what's going on. There we go. Okay, so refresh. Um, God mode, one, two, three, four, five, six. Review. Okay. And we'll just take a quick look. I'm gonna go slowly so I don't trigger anything. Why is that guy yellow? Oh, he's a giant lizard as opposed to a lizard man. Nice. Not seeing any. Might have to restart if they all ended up being lizard men this time. Or I mean all the spawns ended up being lizard men. Which would be really unlucky. There's one all the way out there. Okay. Spore cat mushroom, and we'll just keep an eye on it. I'm getting closer, one step at a time here. It exploded. Okay, so let's try again. Let's find a. Um, there's one. Okay, ready? We'll get a little closer, and it exploded. Okay. I mean, if that just fixed the bug, that would be annoying. There we go. Spore cap from Ashton decided not to cast Confusion Cloud. Range is slightly over three, and the chance is 39. So I understand why it would decide not to cast Confusion Cloud, because the range is over. So I think maybe the bug, if I hit space now, it moved closer to me. And I think that's because now I'm the target. So now I hit space again. And it attacks player but can't connect. Um, and this must be the issue. The issue here is that it has decided that I am an enemy that needs to be chased down. So there's this, this one component. I forget what the component is. Um... Let's see if we can find it. Apply move, apply teleport. Chasing. And it wants to approach. So we it, it ended up starting to chase me. And once the chase, it 
it's on chasing me, then let's let's look for where chasing happens. Once that component is on, right here. So we we came we must have come through here, right? So the spore cap mushroom decided not to cast confusion cloud. So now it's inserted this wants to approach and chasing. And once that happens, I think, hmm, there must be a chase AI system that gets triggered, right? And so once we're in the chase AI system, okay, so I think I understand what the bug is now. We're in the chase AI system, and as a result, we do the chase part, and then we remove ourselves, remove that entity from having any further turns. Um, hum, 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 hum. So the, the bug is that we're detecting the player outside of the range that we're allowed to attack the player. And so we suddenly then move into the chase mode. If I hide from this guy, oh, he exploded. I, mo I moved away from it. And then I guess the chase must have ended at that point. I don't know. Anyway, so I think that's what the bug is. That once the uh, the mushroom decides, I can see the player, but I'm too far away to explode. Therefore, I'm going to chase. Um, it means that we need to add some sort of system where the mushroom, um, there's a motionless AI system, <laughs> which doesn't allow chasing or anything like that. All right, so we've got the confusion working. And all that, all that we did, okay, this, this did change, good, uh, check out. We now know what's going on there. I think the only changes were to log the information. Yeah, so we can undo that, right? So we have the confusion cloud. We'll add the poison uh, gas mushrooms now um, to this guy. Yeah, so, so far there hasn't been much coding. But we did we did uh, figure out what the bug is. Do I have a bugs? Yeah. Um, mushrooms will chase lock into chasing the player if the initial contact is outside of the mushrooms. Um, trigger range. Okay. Um, so where was I? Here. We have, um, we're going to add death cap mushrooms. So this is fire cap. There's fire cap, spore cap. Let's add death cap. that and it has a poison cloud effect um, let's add it to the spawn table first I guess okay and then the spell effect of poison cloud like that it has a damage over time of four okay and voila you have poisonous mushroom spore clouds all right, we don't just want to cover the player in spores. There's some lizard men to worry about, but it would make sense for a few monsters to also dwell in the groves. All right, let's see the poison cloud um, guy in effect while we're reading that. We can build it. A couple to spring to mind. Fungus men with whom you can do battle and eat their corpses, and a beast that roams around chewing on fungus or players all day long. Nick Scrage, hi. Thank you for the follow. Um, we can also introduce spore zombies. People's brain has been overtaken by the fungus and seek only to slay its foes. There are some disturbing parasites that take over their hosts in similar manners, so it's not unrealistic as it sounds. That's true. There are parasites that take over insects and make the insects do things that they wouldn't normally do. Um, all right, so we have fungus men. 
Let's copy that. And before we do that, let's take a look at our poison clouds. Um, restart, begin your game. Two, three, four, five, six. And let's see if we can go find some poison clouds. What color are they? I should have looked at what color they were. Um, oh, green. Green must be the poison one. Boom! And we got a dot of four. Nice. So the the um, poison clouds work. Um, we're going to do the lizard men now. Uh, fungus man. So we have under mob. So the lizard men. Um, and it looks like they're red. Okay. Random waypoint. We'll make them spawn. So we'll go to the um, spawn table. There we go. This adds in fungus people who drop meat. You probably don't want to think too much about the flavor. And then spore zombies. Mix screen says, what are you doing for rendering? Just rendering text to WebGL context. I am actually using um, bracket lib. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick here. Um, bracket lib. This guy. It's a roguelike toolkit and it comes with the ability to run it in, um, generate a WASM file. So what I'm doing, if we take a look at my build script, I just build it for WASM and then do a WASM bind gen on it. Um, and that generates the, the, the WASM file. RT stands for roguelike toolkit. Um, or you can actually, if I go over here, I can say cargo run, um, and it, it can, it will also, if you don't build it for WASM, it'll build it for native. So I've got Mac OS running here and yeah, it's a whole, well, it's a whole framework. And so what I'm working my way through, oh, let me let that this start. It'll only take a couple more seconds. Um, what I'm working my way through is a roguelike tutorial. Yeah, so now this is a uh, a native window. This is running native code here. It's resizable, um, although it resizes proportionally, so it looks really bad if you don't get it exactly right. Yeah, this looks terrible. Um, I don't know how to make it look good, <laughs> but it looks bad. Um, but yeah, so this is running nat on native code now, right? And whereas here, I'm running it in um, the browser using WASM. And this one can resize proportionally because it just uses the browser's proportional resize, right? So I, that makes it look better. And also I don't have to keep switching back and forth on screens. I don't have to slide over here to run it and then slide over here. Uh, let me pop this, this um, into chat in case you want to take a look at the tutorial, but it takes you from scratch. So you, you don't have to have any Rust knowledge at all and you don't have to have any roguelike programming at all. Um, and it teaches you everything from the ground up. So you skip forward to the parts you want, and then everything is online. The whole, all the code's online for each chapter in under Amethyst. So you can just skip to the chapter you want, you pull down that chapter and then start working. It's a nice setup. I'm surprised they didn't use branches for this, but you know, this works too, right? This is this is a fine approach. Um, right. So we just did po poison mushrooms, and now we're doing. Um, we did. We added fungus men, but we didn't give them a. F what's the faction? Oh, the, it's a fungi faction. Okay, very good. And that's what the the mushrooms faction is as well. Um, where's the faction table? Where's the faction table? This is the fungi. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have spore zombies. So let's add spore zombies in. Mob. Paste. Uh, and shift that over. Those are also red. Little Zs for um, zombies. And then we also make them a spawn. Okay. Okay. 
Fungus men and spore zombies. And then we have fungus beasts, which are capital F. We'll pattern these beasts after the other animals, but put them in the fungi faction. Um, mobs. Paste. Put the comma there. And these aren't red anymore. They're reddish. Hmm. And we make them spawn. All right. So we have to go back up here. Oops. And we'll put them right here just before the fungus men. Okay, so let's now that we did that, let's try um, building this. Actually, one of the benefits of running native code is that it can read the file directly. So I don't have to rebuild it. I can just say cargo run and it won't have to recompile. Oh, it did recompile it. <clears throat> okay, so it was supposed to be able to just, I should have just uh, hit the target target debug run. It would have loaded the file directly and then because all we're doing is changing the JSON file. We're not changing any code. Um, and so it should just run directly. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they're brown. Interesting. It's a fungal beast. Oh. Player hits fungal beast for eight HP. How many HP it was supposed to have? Had an armor class of of eleven. But I don't see any hmm. Okay. Well I guess they are what they are. Right? It says level five here. For the spore zombie but there's no level for this guy maybe he ends up being level one or level zero or something and therefore it's not very effective let me let me see if i can track down the spore zombie oh, something just attacked let's see if we can find a zombie yeah those those guys are easy to kill I would have thought they would be harder to kill. Um, they're not even as hard to kill as the lizard men. Um, but let's go find a spore zombie. This doesn't look like a very big map. You can see it's mostly forest. So I guess the call on reachable didn't work too well. Let me do it again. This is slightly bigger. There's a spore zombie. Okay. So. Yeah. So killing this guy is a lot tougher. So I think I think what the issue is that this, the fungal beast. Um, yeah, and I, my level just went up by a whole bunch. It's, the fungal beast does not have a, a level. So it's going to have very low everything very low stats so let's take a look at their code uh oh what chapter am i on 68 so let's go to 68 and take a quick peek at the fungal beast no okay so they're just level one creatures uh even though they have a capital f i thought that the capital letters would i mean in general, the capital letters should have more, right? Here's a lowercase f with level four. So I think I think the, the level was just left out of here. Maybe it should be a, a level five or a level six or something. All right. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if you cargo run now, you're, you have a level teeming with life and things that go boom. Yep. Okay. So let's, let's uh, commit these changes. that and get commit populated the mushroom grow oh right the other thing i wanted to take a look at was this thing here all the way at the top when we created the where 
Where is it? Um, center. Yeah. So what I what I missed was that the starting position should be on the right and the ending position should be on the left. For whatever reason, so all the other maps have start on the left and go to the right. This one, when you go into the uh, fort side, it should go start on the right and end on the left. And I have that wrong. I have that backwards. So I'm going to fix that. Um, <laughs> so the starting position should be on the right. And the ending position should be on the left. I think now we have to comment in the left part of this um, X end. It's going to say that it doesn't exist or something like that. Yeah, so we have to put that in. Um, so that would be in ending position. And this goes here. Right, and now if we build this, um, we should start on the left and go towards the right. Sorry, we sorry. Start on the right and go towards the left, um, like uh, they were intending in the design doc. Because the fortress ends up being on the right side for whatever reason, and then you work your way to the left. So it's a slightly different approach to the rest of the game. But maybe that's suitable because um, you are in a mushroom realm. All right, so we're up to this handful of items. Let me just check it real quick, make sure that worked. Um, God mode, one, two, three, four, five, six. And yes, we are standing, starting on, and the reason being, so if I would do a reveal here, we can see we're all the way over on the right-hand side here of this Dwarven Fortress. And then we go down a level, like stepping on the stairs here, and now we have to work our way through this fortress area. See how this has got these lines of the fortress. I'm going to hit reveal like that. So we have this little fortress area here that we have to get through. And then we get into the mushroom forest this way. Right. We work our way through the mushroom forest. Oh. i got to fix that, that um, particle bug that causes that nameless item tooltip. Um, and then we work our way through here. Ooh, fungal beast, let's walk around him. Oh, I killed him. Oh, okay. And then we get down here, and we go this way, and now we're on new map, which is level 7, which we haven't done yet. Okay, so that works. A handful of items. As a reward for being perpetually gassed, gnawed on by zombies, and chewed up by beasts, it's about time to introduce some new items to the grove. Let's consider a few new items a player may encounter. A simple boost is better is a better long sword okay so again we're just going to modify the raws code here so we can just stick in a long sword plus two the benefit for having everything in a json files you just have to mod you don't have to change any code you're just throwing everything in here the downside is that everything's in this one giant file and you end up having, I mean, how big is this file already? It's over 2,000 lines of JSON. So finding things and changing things and, and hmm, it's, I don't know if there's a better way to do it. I mean, there must, there's gotta be a better way to do it, right? Because you want, you want to be able to include different files saying, okay, here's the weapons, here's the armor, here's, and then you have a different file for each one. You know where to go and look for things. Um, and then we have to add it to spawn list, so long sword, we have long sword plus one, minus one, so we'll put in plus two there. Uh, that starts at level seven, so we don't see long sword plus two until we get down to the mushroom level. Okay, and then we'll add magical breastplate, so under items. And then we have to add it to the spawn table. Um, where else do we have? There's shield, so we can just put it right here, right? Likewise, it's easy to take the basic tower shield and offer an improved version, tower shield plus one. Okay, 
So we go to tower shield and we can just put tower shield plus one next to it, I guess. All right. Extra blank line. Let's go back here. And then this guy's spawn rate or spawn table entry goes like that. Okay. We should also consider filling in some of the unused equipment slots. We have quite a few torso oriented items and very little to fill the other slots. In the name of completeness, we should add a few. So we have head items, which is a cloth cap, a leather cap, a chain coif, and a steel helm. Okay. Um, items. So we're gonna add all these guys in here. And I'm just shifting them over so they line up with the other ones. All right. So we added those guys and then we're gonna copy in this for the um, spawn table. Oops. Um, I don't know where to put it. Maybe here? Sure. There we go. And then leg items. We also have a few leg items right now, but not many. We have torn trousers and cloth pants. Let's also expand those to include leather chain and steel. All right, so under items, we paste these guys in. Shift him over, shift him over, shift him over. Okay, so those three, and oh, there's four here. Cloth pants, leather pants, chain leggings, and steel graves. What are we missing? Oh, we don't have cloth pants. Maybe we already have those cloth. We do have cloth pants. Cloth cap. Oh, interesting. But there's nothing in the spawn table for it. Okay, so I guess we're fixing that here. It'd be nice to sort these by min depth and then maybe by weight after that. Um, I don't know how to do that in, in Vim though. And then foot items. Likewise, a story for foot armor is quite limited. We have old boots, slippers, and leather boots. We should add chain and plate. There's leather, chain, steel. Okay. So we do this and we shift, shift, shift. Okay, and then we're gonna copy these guys into the spawn table. I guess here. Right, that looks good. And then hand items, cloth gloves, leather gloves, chain gloves, and steel gloves. Oh, yeah, now we have plenty of different items to find as we're playing the game. Right, there's the items, and then we have to add them to the loot table. And then we're done with this chapter. I guess we can put it right after the boots. Right, there we go. So let's write those. We're good. Um, I don't know if we should go hunting for them now or if we should just move on. Git status. It should just be this. Oh, right. I fixed this. Git add source. Git commit. Fix uh, entrance. Exit for mushroom forest. And then we're going to um, add git add raws. Oops, got add Ross. Get add Ross. Get commit. Lots of new basic items for the player. Okay. So if I build this now, theoretically, we sh I should be able to play all the way through 
the game until we get to new map. Um, we do have the, the dragon to beat on level three or four or something. Um, now, it probably would take a while to, to get to that point, but we've got almost the whole game. If we look here, we can see we're nearly at the end of the, the book. Um, more shrooms, range content, logging, which doesn't sound like we're adding gameplay, but it sounds like we're going to update all of this, the, the um, info here where, where we're, we're not getting all the information that we should be seeing. Um, text layers, I'm not sure what that's about. And then maybe we're going to, um, for the systems dispatch, maybe we're going to rework how the systems work. Because right now we're running every system every uh, 60 times a second. And that's probably, maybe there's some optimization we're going to do there. That's my guess. Here's Dark Elf City 1. And I believe there's going to be at least a Dark Elf City 2. And then that would end the game. Um, but I, I don't know when that's going to come out because the guy who wrote this um, is a new dad and he's busy now with um, bringing up a, a, an infant. And I know how much work, I went through three of those myself, so I know how much work those can be um, in a good way, in a good way. Let's say it that way, in a, in a good way. So should we, let me try to see how far I can get. Let's restart. I'm not going to use the cheat menu. I have no gold. I have a hangover. I am well fed. And I do have a dried sausage and some beer on me in my um, equipped items, which is listed here as well. I have the longsword, tunic, trousers, and old boots. So the first thing we need to do is, is collect gold, right? I was tempted just now to, to reveal the map, but I got to avoid the cheat menu. Um, one thing we can do to try to level up is to kill a few rats. And I don't know if that's going to get us any money. Um, I'm not... Oh, I did. I, rat hits player for zero, rat hits player for two. But I'm not... Why aren't I attacking? The rats are killing the, the, the townsfolk, but not me. How come not me? There we go. Now I got it. Okay. Uh, maybe because it was on the door? So that would be another bug. Right? Yeah, I can't. The rats are hitting me, but not. I'm not hitting the rat. And he can't get around the corner here. Okay, so... We have it, um, and, oh, there we go. I had to go up a level, or up a couple of squares to draw the, the rat up, maybe? No? Yeah, this rat, mm. And I can't get in there because the rat's blocking the doorway. Rat can hit me, but I can't hit the rat. Um, so that's, that's an annoying bug that we should probably try to track down because it's no fun to play the game if you can't attack if the rat's standing on the door. It's also no fun that the rat can't figure out how to get around this door. There we go. I had to get it on the diagonal. I'm almost dead now, though. If I rest up, I can heal back up. Maybe we can draw a few more rats out. He's not chasing me. How come? Oops. Oh. Yeah. And now I'm hungry. Um, shift one for dried sausage. I'm not getting any money for killing the rats. I am getting some experience. Um, it would be nice if there was some money involved so I could go buy equipment. Maybe we need to go to the first level. How do I get out of town here? Uh, maybe we need to go down to the first level and start earning some money. I'm going to rest up. 
and hopefully find rations. Oh, there's a bandit and a rat right away. Let me hide from them. I'm one bear trap away from being killed. I don't think I can kill the deer. Because uh, the deer tends to run away. Oh, no, I was, wasn't was able to kill it. It ran away somehow. I don't know how. There we go. Okay, so now I have equipment. Oops, let's get that. Nothing left to pick up. So I should be able to put on leather armor and leather boots and equipped a dagger. Um, so that should give us a little better equipment now to, to mess around with. And I do have five gold, which is not enough money to buy anything in town. And I'm going to start to starve very soon because I don't have any food. I was hoping to find rations. So I don't, I don't know. Ooh, yeah, now I'm hungry. I'm going to start taking damage soon. And I don't think I can buy... Oh, there's a wolf. I was able to kill the... Oh, there we go. I was able to pick up some meat. Shift 2. Now I'm well fed. Okay. So I managed to get through that. There's a smelly violet potion. Which might be a potion of healing. Or it could be a potion of confusion. This is not fun. There we go. I picked up hide. Oh, maybe I can use hide to sell in town for money. Oh, that's the other bug that we need to fix. And I don't know if we're going to get to that because I didn't see it in any of the chapters. I didn't see the, the hint of it in any of the title ch of the chapters we were looking at. So notice I came back to town, but town is all forgotten. Um, and we figured out why that's happening, um, but I don't know what the intended approach is for fixing that bug. Here's the rats again. And I think I was in, in, was it here? Who's this? Clothier, will he buy hide? Um, sell which item? I can sell G. And I can sell G. I can also sell my old boots because I'm not wearing them anymore. I have my steam tunic. And I'll take my rusty longsword for eight. All right, so I'm up to 24.2. Oh, I must have sold something I shouldn't have sold. B. There we go. All right, so I got 25 gold. Um, but. <clears throat> yeah, so. The game is, is game-ish right now. It probably takes a lot longer to play than I have stream time for. So I'm going to stop playing it there and then we'll move on to the next chapter. Um, deep Mushroom Forest. Okay, this chapter will add another level of Mushroom Grove to the game, this time without a Dwarven Fortress. It'll also add the final Mushroom level, which according to the design document gives way to a dark elven city. Finally, we'll further improve our item story by automating some of the drudge work going in, going with adding magical and cursed items. Okay. We'll start by opening up Map Builder's mod and adding another line to the Map Builder. Okay, so we're going to get this line eight here. We're clean. We're clean. So we say eight is going to be. Mushroom Builder. And then we'll open up the Mushroom Forest line and add that. Oops. There we go. All right, so that's the Mushroom Entrance. So now we're going to add Mushroom Builder. I guess we can just grab this guy. Put him here. And change this to Builder. All right. 
let me just take care of a spammer real quick here and then we'll keep going all right um so we're going to create a let mod chain start with a builder chain And then we're going to do into the mushroom grove. Oh, it's also called into the mushroom grove. Okay. And we're going to do this. So we're going to chain start with. Um, and then so waveform collapse. So is it the same thing here? So waveform collapse, starting position is center center, call unreachable, starting position is right center, and then left center for ending position and for noise spawning. And then we just leave the prefab out. Okay. And just return chain. This is basically the same as the other mushroom builder with the, without the prefab overlay. If you go into main and change the starting level, Cargo run, you get a pretty passable level. It, it's retained the mob spawns from our previous level because we carefully included them in our spawn level ranges. Okay. End of the fungal forest. Once again, we'll add another level to map builder. Okay, so this is just an intermediate level. And now we have the mushroom exit. So here. And give it the same code to start with as the mushroom builder. Okay. Oops. Um, like that. And then change this to exit. And we're done. And it's still called into the mushroom grove. Okay. We'll also hit up main to make a start on that level. Well, we're not going to do that. I know how to jump directly to that level. Two identical design-wise, the content will vary due to procedural generation. Two identical levels in a row is pretty dull, and we need to convey the idea that there is an entrance to a dark elven city here. We'll start by adding a new prefab sectional to the map. So this, I think, probably goes in the prefab section. Yeah, see, this says prefab sectional drow entry. So if we look at our prefab, that's prefab room, prefab level. And that's the code that does the prefab placement. This is all the builder stuff that converts the prefab into something. So I think we're, we're looking at one of these things here. Right. I don't think we have to do the allow dead code pub const draw entry. See, this is prefab rooms. This is prefab section. So maybe this doesn't belong here. Yes, here's prefab sections. Okay. Yeah, let's put this here. That's the orc camp. Good. Okay. Pub const draw entry. And it's going to have a template entry text width of 12, a height of 10. Placement is going to be center horizontally. And centered vertically okay that's that and then we're going to have the const of draw entry oop, drown entry text which is a stir it's a blank line and it looks like there's 
There's nine of those guys. There's an E there, and then this thing here, and then nine more of those guys, and a blank line, and we're done. Be careful with spaces. There are spaces all around the prefab that are meant to be there to ensure it has gutter around it. Now we'll modify our mushroom exit. Okay, so maybe there's, there's spaces here. Yeah. Okay. And maybe around here. Yep. Okay, so we'll add those spaces in. Put those here and then put a space here and a space here and a space here. How many spaces are here? Yep, just one space. Okay, good. Now we modify our mushroom exit to function to spawn it. Okay, so let's take a look at the mushroom. And we're going to stick it here at the end. And we probably need to import it here, right? Prefab sections, and this is draw entry and we failed oh I forgot the equal sign and why is this failing oh I forgot the, the colon there we go. Okay, let's try one more time. Still two errors. Chain with a that and chain with a that. Okay, good. So we got this working or compiling. Unknown glyph loading map E. So you can cargo run now and find the exit in the middle now. But there is no dark elves. The E spawns nothing at all and generates a warning. Okay, let's see that in action. And at some point, I should just play through the entire game, right? Although that would take um, a while. So I probably wouldn't do it on stream. Maybe I'd record it and then upload the highlights to YouTube or something. That would probably be the best thing to do. Okay, refresh, begin new game, go into God mode. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is the middle layer, which should not have, oh. We have, okay, this we need to fix. And this failed. So we weren't able to, oh, here's unknown glyph. Index is out of bounds. Land is 72, but the index is 72. So this is in our prefab builders. We must have a um, an issue there with spacing again. You have to be really careful with the spacing around that, like he, he said. And I think they just need, it just means they need to all be the same length. This comes out to here, that comes out to there, and that comes out to there. So I think, yeah, I think we just need to add to make sure that they're all the same length. Okay, that's easy enough to do. The width is 12, so I just want to make sure that they're 12 wide. Um, and I do need to fix these two bugs. Duplicate chain coif and leather boots. Oh, okay. They have the same. Okay, so let me pull this one out. Yeah, there's two of these guys, and they're identical. I'm flipping back and forth, and I don't see any difference, so I'll just delete one of them. And then leather boots. Let's go to the top. We see this one here and this one here. So this one is... 2 to 100, and this one is 1 to 100. I guess we can do the... Um, this one actually doesn't matter because it's not going to spawn anything on one. And then leather boots here, and leather boots here. And these are also identical. 
So let's just get rid of one of them. Okay. So git add that, git commit dash m, remove duplicate coif and boots. Okay. So let's let's figure let's fix this panic. It shouldn't panic. Um, and that was in the sections. Right? We want to make sure we have twelve. Let's put um let's say twelve. 12a. There we go. So it should come out to here. Each line should come out to this location. So let's just make sure it does. So that's there. That's there. Oh. Just want to make sure we're at the end on each line. Okay, so that hopefully will fix the panic. And the unknown glyph E is okay. It shouldn't it shouldn't panic just because it didn't know the unknown glyph. All right, let's rebuild real quick. Make sure it doesn't panic. And refresh, and see this working. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we're in, into the mushroom grove. We can see the, the entrance to the fortress here. If I go to the next level, seven. Oh, yeah, we have to change. Okay, what's wrong here is we need to change the um, the theme. So it's, it draws mushrooms and things like that. Because right now it's just using the old, I mean, there's there's a confusion mushroom. So we know we're on the right level. We got a scroll, shift three. Oh, that was a town portal scroll. Okay, good to know. And there's one of the zombies. All right, so this is this, and if we go to the next level, oh, it still panics. Okay, that's not good. Teleporting to eight, I gotta get rid of that one. that console log I'll leave that there because that's a debug message okay oops okay um, but we're still having this issue here where the len is 72 but the index is 72 blah 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 so we're on prefab builder build and that's where it panics um, and unfortunately we don't have a line number but we can take a look at it um, i guess prefab So, hmm, yeah, so it must be calling this apply sectional, is my guess. Although I don't see that in here. Well, it is 72, but the index is 72. I wonder if we can get more data out of... Yeah, we don't have line numbers. Um... This is where I think the bug is, is we're going through this um, width and height of the prefab section. And it's um, going out of bounds here on string vec of i. This is where I think it's failing. Because this i just goes through on one character at a time. It should, hmm, maybe, maybe I have the thing wrong. Hang on, let's take a look at um, sections. 
It does say height 10, which doesn't is not right. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. It should be six wide, uh, six high instead of 10 high. So I think maybe that's the issue because 72 is 12 times six, right? Let's take a look at, let's take a look at this again. This is definitely not 10 high. So let's take a look at their code. So let's be under source. Hello, source. Map builders. Prefab. Where is it? There it is, right at the top. Prefab sections. Let's look at this drow business. It's not here. Oh, we're on the chat. We're on the wrong chapter. All right, let's go to chapter sixty-nine. Let's see if we can make this nice. Patatas, hi. How are you? Thank you for joining. Map builders, prefab, prefabs. Come on. Why does it not do that sometimes? Oh, this is very different. This is very different to what's in here, isn't it? Does it change? I'm just scanning down to see if we change the, the layout and it looks like no. So I'm just gonna grab this text here. Um, let me grab the raw. It's an off by off by four error, patatas. Um, because it looks like this this should have been this should have looked like this, but some, for some reason, I mean, you can see it here. Oh, now I've lost it. I'm definitely losing it. Is it? It doesn't look anything like what's in the actual code. So I'm just going to paste this in. And unfortunately, VI decided to get rid of the spaces there, but this should all be 12 by 10 now, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. Let's check that. Let's build that. Let me take a look. If I hit copy here, and go into VI. Let's see. Yeah, see, look at that. I think what happened was this greater than sign threw off the, the formatting of the um, the output. Something got messed up with that greater than sign in here. And it um, is just, yeah. It's an off by HTML error. Let's put it that way. Okay, so now if we go there, hopefully we won't panic. Refresh, begin new game, God mode. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, well, it didn't panic. And now let's see if the pref. Oh, come on. Gotta duck around all these creatures here. Where's the prefab section? It's not showing up. Oh, right, I think it needs enough space to make the, the sectional, right? And there isn't enough space in here. We need to hollow out some room in the middle for that. So let's see if the, he talks about that. You can cargo run and find the exit in the middle. No, you can't. If I go to the next next level it says new map so it just generated a random level so this level here does not have the entrance that we're looking for which is a shame so let's take a look at again Let's take a look at their code. No, not this one. Um, let's take a look at the mushroom forest code and see if he did anything special. No. No. 
Although the prefab builder sectional should overwrite, right? It should overwrite it. Let's take a look at that code. I should just slap it in there, regardless of what's um, it's prefab here, prefab builder sectional. It just returns a sectional, which does this, apply sectional, which is, it just places the sectional. Okay, so let's take a look at that code. And make sure that I don't have any bugs in here. We're doing the center center. So that's not a problem. Apply previous iteration. That looks all the same. Yeah, this looks correct. And we were getting the panic before, which meant that we were going through this code and going too far with the string vec. Did we see the, um, yeah, we saw three unknown glyph E's and an unknown glyph greater than. So it tried to apply the sectional, but I don't see it here. Unless it's this. Is that what it's supposed to look like? No. It's just supposed to be a, a, a square. One, two, three, four, five, six high. I mean, this is six high, so maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Although I'm confused as to why there's a... Yeah, I don't know why th these two are here. Or that. Although that might be the stairs. Okay. All right. Um, let's fix the un un unknown glyph loading map E. You can cargo run now, but there's no dark elves. E spawns nothing at all and generates a warning. That's fine. We haven't implemented any dark elves yet. So here we're going to add an E to mean dark elf. right here. This is in chart to map. Um, I guess it doesn't matter where it goes. And it looks like they also added this here, which doesn't exist. So let's add that as well. Um, oops, build underscore data dot map dot tiles so index equals tile type. Um, downstairs. And then if it's an E, build data. Oh, it's going to be, we're doing two things. Build data map tiles of IDX is equal tile type floor and build data spawn list push IDX dark elf to string. Like that. Okay. Yeah, so they also have to add that. We're adding the downstairs to it. Oh, right. There's the watch fire right there. Okay, good. This character, I don't know if this is matching properly. If you cargo run, the error is now replaced with warning. We don't know how to spawn dark elf. That's good. That's progress. Okay. Uh, just make sure this checks. course it doesn't because I did that instead of that and so what we'll do now is we're going to copy here into raws uh, mobs we're going to put in the dark elf 
and we're going to add it to our spawn list or our sorry our uh, spawn table let's put it right at the top like that oh. there we go If you can't go run now, you'll have some moderately powerful Dark Elves to deal with there, level 6. But they do have a lot of gold. The thing is, they aren't very Dark Elfy. They're basically reskinned bandits. What do you think of when you think Dark Elf? Um, they are quite evil, magical, fast-moving, and generally quite formidable. They also tend to have their own dark technology and pepper their enemies with ranged weaponry. We aren't going to support range, range weaponry until the next chapter, but we can take some steps to make them more dark elven. Let's give them more a more dark elf sounding set of items in the equipped tag. We'll go with this. This is interesting. So dark elf should have a space there. Oh, this is a faction entry. My mistake. That's why. So where's our faction table? We need to put this here. this there okay um, so in our equipped for dark elf so we're gonna put this oops paste no what do I do I thought I had that in my copy buffer okay Paste. There we go. A scimitar, a buckler, a drow chain, a drow leggings, and drow boots. So now we have to add those to our items. So we have a scimitar. Like that. We'll follow the trend for drow armor, but it's basically chain armor, but with much less initiative penalty. Okay. The result of these is they are fast. They have much, much less initiative penalty than similarly armored player. The other nice thing is you can kill one, take their stuff, and have the same benefit. At this point, we've added two playable levels in only a few lines of code, reaping the benefits of working so hard on a generic system. So now let's make things a little more generic and save ourselves some typing. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think where we are now is we have, this is all the items, and we added the two new levels. Yep, we want those spaces there. Those are good spaces to have. So let's uh, get add raws and source. That's everything. Get commit. Draw. Elves and more mushroom levels. Okay, so let's build this, and I'm gonna wrap the stream up here since I, w I went a little too long yesterday. I need to um, make up some time today, and then tomorrow we're gonna dig into this procedurally generated magical items. So it looks like we have a generic longsword, and then we can modify we have bonus min to bonus max so that's what i'm seeing here is and then maybe we just randomly generate items based on the min and max so we'll see how that goes um let us see if we can find some drow elves begin new game two three four five six seven i don't know what i want to summon we want to go into god mode and see if we can find these drow elves. I didn't see any errors, so hopefully it all worked. Oops, I stepped on a trap. I just got exploded by a mushroom. Yeah, we need to reskin this. Where's the um I'm not seeing Am I in the last level? Maybe I have to go one more? Yeah, one more. Okay. Let's see if we can find the drow elves in their little box. Yeah, there's their little box right there. 
So let's get up and around to them. There they are. So they already escaped. Dark elf, dark elf. I'm going to try to kill one. I don't know if I can kill one because I don't have very good equipment. I do have jaw chain, jaw leggings, and jaw boots. So I could put those on now. E and F and pick up the scimitar. No, I'm not, I'm not very effective with these guys either. Oh, there was a spell that just got cast. Oh, no, I leveled up. That was it. All right. So I'm on level two now. So I killed those guys, and now we can go inside their little hut here and see the downstairs. Boom. And now we're on the new map. Okay. So this is all working. Um, let's push these up and call it a stream. So like I said, tomorrow, procedurally generate magical items. Um, meanwhile, thanks very much for hanging out with me. And um, I will hopefully see you tomorrow. All right. Take care, everyone.